my previous video I talked about the importance of seeing the world rather than really looking at the world in order to build powerful virtual reality centralizations. In this video I want to talk about the importance of hearing as an added component of your virtual reality centralization. I'd like to start by introducing you to a man called Daniel Kish. Uh, he's one of the most remarkable men you're ever likely to meet. Although completely blind, Daniel likes nothing better than to cycle his mountain bike through some of the most perilous terrains in California. He does this by using his ears in place of his eyes through a procedure called echolocating, what he terms his flash sonar. By clicking his tongue as he speeds along, Daniel sends out pulses of sound. These sounds bounce off nearby surroundings and when they return, they carry with them physical information about those surfaces, about its texture, its density, its location, and even its geometry. And from this information, he's able to construct in his visual cortex, that part of the brain he would use if he were sighted, to create a powerful visual three-dimensional picture of the world around him. It's exactly as he would see if he was actually using his eyes rather than his ears. Now, I'm not suggesting we have to develop the same level of skill as Daniel Kish in order to use virtual reality, but his ability to look purely by listening and see by hearing shows how powerful our powers of hearing can be once we've trained them. And we could use these sounds stored away in our memory in order to create powerful centralizations. You see, we tend to hear what we expect to hear rather than what we actually hear in the world around us. Your brain is highly selective and tends to focus on those things which seem most important and relevant to you at that particular moment, while it's ignoring all other sounds. I think this is well illustrated by a story I was told of a banker and a naturalist who were walking together down a busy city street. Suddenly the naturalist turned to his friend and said, Oh, listen, can you hear that song thrush in the nearby park? No, replied the banker, and neither, I take a bet, can anyone else. The banker then took a coin from his pocket and tossed it to the ground, where it landed on the stone pavement with a metallic clink. At once a dozen heads turned in its direction. You see, said the banker, we only hear what is most important to us. And in a city, that means money, not birdsong. Although I find it's rather a sad story, I think it's basically true. It does show how we attend to what we want to hear or expect to hear in the world around us. So in order to break this habit, try and explore the sounds around you as carefully as intently as possible. Notice those at the distance and those closer at hand. Observe, observe how they rise and fall, change and blend and merge into one another. Focus all your attention on your sense of hearing. And if it's safe to do so, I suggest you close your eyes to be avoid being distracted by images. While listening in this way, try and avoid labeling any of the sounds you hear. For example, instead of thinking, ah, an aircraft passing high overhead, or a dog barking close by, allow your brain to attend to the tonal quality, what we call the oral color of the sound. At night, you might care to use your own body as a sounding board. So you're lying quietly in the darkness, and you can focus all your attention on the sound of your breathing. Do so without making any judgment about it or labelling it, for example, as smooth or laboured. Just listen. How does it sound? How does it sound when it enters your body and when it leaves your body? Are there any differences in the sound of an inhalation and an exhalation? The most important thing to bear in mind is to train yourself to listen mutually rather than by passing judgment on anything you hear. 
Once you've learned to do this, I think you'll be amazed how easy it is to train the brain to become more focused on the auditory channel rather than primarily on the visual one. How powerful your sense of hearing becomes and how much richer your world experience will be will quickly become obvious and you can use this information in order to enhance, greatly enhance your virtual reality experiences when you sensualize. In the next lesson I want to talk about ways of enhancing your sense of taste and your sense of smell, two more vital sensory pieces of information for use in your centralization. Until then, goodbye and thank you for watching.